What's up? My name is Julian Williams, and I take Expedite. Some days I walk into the gym, and I don't necessarily feel like working. I take a scoop or two of this, be ready to go. It's the best stuff I've ever had. Expedite. Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Viegas here in Los Angeles, being joined with Eddie Hearn, who's fighter Anthony Krala, is fighting Vasily Lomachenko on ESPN Plus this Friday. Eddie, man, it's been months. Yes. Like, I've been trying to hunt, hound you down for like months and months and months, oh, man. And we started out with you, you yeah. know, when we come to, <laughs> come to. And one thing that always um, resonates with me about you is you've got great hair. Yeah. You have great hair. Mine's like receding a little bit. You've got that perfect. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wish I had hair like you. Well, I wish I had your height, man. Yeah, and, and you know, have everything. we'll yeah, swap. That's true. We'll swap. Yeah. <laughs> man, there's so much to talk to you about. First off, obviously, your fighter is fighting yeah. uh, this Friday. Um, you're doing this fight on ESPN mm -hmm. Plus. You're with the Zone. Yeah. How was? How did that all work out? So Anthony Crawler become the mandatory yeah. um, to fight uh, Lomachenko. I don't think that Bob and those guys were over the moon about that, but he. He earned the right, so you know you can't really do a lot about it. It was definitely a fight we were interested to uh, put on the zone. Um, we couldn't really get there on a negotiation point of view. We looked at purse bids. It had the potential to get very messy. Um, the relationship between ESPN and the zone and Top Rank and Matchroom is good. We'll both say bad things every now and again because that's just what Bob does and what I do. But yeah, you know, there's a there's kind of like a mutual understanding that. Do we want to go down that road of creating these huge purse bids? And, and then they came back with an offer. I felt it was a good offer for Anthony. I spoke to DAZN. I said, look, you know, this is a good offer for the fighter. It's a lot of money. Um, do you want to go to purse bid? And they said, no, that's no, fine. Look, you know, if you feel that's the right opportunity. And that's the kind of partner that I'm looking for as well. Not just a great broadcaster with a lot of money and a lot of dates, but one that understands the need of a fighter to make sure that we can't just be obstructive and stop opportunities, stop fighters from making the money they should be making, stop them from being in career-defining fights and fights that the fans want to see. So that's important and um, this was an opportunity where a great deal was presented to Crawler and I said, mate, this is a great deal and he said, okay, if you're happy, let's do it and we did it and that's why we're here and obviously a few days away now from the fight. Okay, so that gets me thinking now that regardless of you being with the zone, that's not going to stop a fighter if they want to fight to go and fight, say on Fox or on ESPN, or does it? Is it is this a special? No, it's a case by case scenario. I mean, Anthony Crawler is a UK fighter. Okay, so when you look at the US fighters and the fighters that are under contract to Matchroom Boxing USA and the Zone, obviously any promoter in that position wants to keep the best and biggest of their fighters with their broadcaster. It's just na yeah, exactly. So like, is Canelo going to go and fight? on Showtime or HBO? No. Not after those 300 no, something exactly. million. You know, yeah. is um, Usyk right now going to go and fight another platform? No. In time, and you know, this is, I've read a lot of stuff from Bob about Anthony Joshua, you know. Oh, he's with the zone. Like, no, he's on a fight by fight deal with uh, the zone. The plan is for Anthony Joshua to remain on the zone. Until a deal is presented to cement that future, he has the ability to fight on any other platform. And right now, with the landscape and with the situation regarding the Wilder fight and the Fury fight, I'd rather he was in that position because Fury can't fight anywhere else. Yeah, Wilder, we don't really know. Joshua can. So when you read stuff like, oh, Joshua's, you know, he can't fight anywhere else. Right now he can. Like I said, our commitment, our long-term plans and future are with the zone. I believe Joshua will do a deal with the zone. We'll talk to other people as well. We'll want to make sure that it doesn't block other fights, and that's what's important because I don't feel like you're really doing a great job for a fighter if you're blocking him out of situations, especially at that stage in their career, in career-defining fights. If the deal comes along, and Fury's a good example. Now, let's remember Tyson Fury turned down the Wilder rematch. Now, it weren't effective, and all, all the bad stuff I, I've said in the past about Wilder, he ain't at fault here. Tyson Fury has turned his back on this rematch to sign a big financial deal with ESPN to take what it looks like at the moment easier, less appealing fights. I don't blame him, you know? But until a deal is presented like that, that I feel we cannot turn this deal down, I don't want to restrict the landscape and make sure that Joshua can't fight there, can't fight there. Because what's important to Joshua is the undisputed world championship. That is the key. And it's not about 
oh, he can only fight there and he can only fight there. We need to have that flexibility right now in his career to see what happens post big baby Miller, especially in that month after, to know that we must strike and make the, the Wilder fight in November, December. It's the biggest fight in world boxing. It's the best fight in world boxing. We have to make it. So we've got to be very careful right now just to make sure that we're not handcuffed to not be able to make a fight. So common sense would say to keep him as a free agent, yeah, Joshua, and deal not... presented itself yeah. that was just a deal that, you know, sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. And again, that probably happened. I'm sure Fury probably wanted the rematch with Wilder, but ultimately he turned it down for this deal. But, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant, Joshua's made a lot of money, you know, and he will make a lot of money, but he wants that undisputed, that's what he wants. And, you know, it's about legacy right now. And I feel like after 22 fights, what will be 23 with Big Baby Miller, if you look at his pedigree and his resume, he's outstanding compared to the others. But he still wants that. It's the ultimate, isn't it? It's the golden chalice. It's everything. The it makes everything complete. Yeah, it's the undisputed heavyweight world champion. So, okay, so he, when you come here, a lot of fans blame you guys for not making that fight. Go over to the UK, they blame Wilder for not making the fight. Obviously, it's a little bit of both, I think, when you look at, on the outside. It's... It's the same stuff with like Mayweather Pacquiao. Both sides yeah. were at it's fault just, for yeah, so. Right, just on that, it's changed a lot. I mean, okay. when, like Joshua made a little bit of an error when he came out and went, give me 50 million, I'll sign. Mm -hmm. So then Wilder sends a personal email. I mean, we all know the stories. And it was a bit, the heat was on us a little bit. Obviously, when the design offers were sort of published and rumored recently, it went the other way. Oh my God, Wilder's turned this fight down. What is he doing? So everyone's always to blame. Like, we haven't been perfect in this negotiation. They haven't been perfect. But cut the bullshit. We've got to try and make it. Like, that's all that matters. We all have an obligation to try and make this fight. And there's so many different people in that. There's me, there's Joshua, there's Deontay, there's Al Heyman, there's Shelley. We've all got to keep trying. And we can't turn our back on it. And um, I think the big thing is going to be like where it lands. You know, and a, a lot of the times it's always been like uh, the, the middle ground has been we'll do a pay-per-view where we co-promote it. But if he's with the zone, Joshua, if they give him a deal, that, that's a big wedge there because their whole philosophy is no pay-per-view. What it will come down to yeah. is which broadcaster is willing to pay the most money. Yeah. Because there's the other stuff, there's no real variables. You know, we know it sells out any arena in the world yeah. and it makes a lot of money on the gate. We know it breaks UK pay-per-view records and we know it pretty much within 5 or 10% how much that will generate. Do you think because he turned down, it was a great deal from DAZN, I, I even scratched my head like, oh, why did he turn this deal down? It seems that uh, Wilder's a very loyal guy and he feels, okay, he, he owes something to Al, um, and they're paying him good money. So even if it's a fantastic offer, you still got to think he still might not take it if the offer is come to DAZN and... and, and but, but at the end of the day, maybe there's an offer from them to me or us for Joshua, I don't know. You would have no problem moving Joshua over there for one fight. At the end of the day, what I've said before is Joshua is with the zone. Yeah. We see his long-term future with the zone. If there is a deal that comes in from another platform to make that fight on another platform, that I can't, you know, honestly look my client in the eye and say, no, I'm not going to be that guy that goes to him and say, no, don't do this. You can do this. We can do this instead. It's much better for you. I promise. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to look at it and go, it's like the deal, we've got to do it. Yeah. We've got to do it. Do you want it? Do you want to do this? This is the pros, this is the cons, and that could happen. But for me, that offer is only coming from one place right now, and that's the zone. So again, we're open, we're willing to talk. The most important thing is that Deontay Wilder beats Brazil on May the 18th, and Anthony Joshua beats Jarrell Miller on June 1. Both those guys, Miller and Brazil, have a shot in those fights. If either guy lose, the whole thing is fucked. So focus on that. The talks will be ongoing. Everybody's trying, you know, it, whether it's John Skipper, whether it might be another platform, people want that fight. So we have to keep just carrying on, talking, trying, trying to find some common ground, trying to bury some egos or some bad blood and, you know, but ultimately... Ultimately it comes down to the money, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. the, the, it, the it, thing. It does, but it becomes a lot harder when people sort of, you know, like what, what I like about Bob Aram yeah. is, right? He's been slagging me off for like the last two weeks, yeah? <laughs> but he wasn't too happy that no. they're in this fight. Yeah, but... He does, he's not happy about no. the price he paid for him either. But that's my job. Yeah. Like, he'd do the same thing. <laughs> like, I, I out-hustled Bob Aaron once. <laughs> Only once. Give me some credit, you know? He's a, he's a legend. He's 87 years old, yeah. you know? 
And I can say to him, you know, yeah, Bob, I did Joshua against Klitschko, 90,000 at Wembley. He says, well, when I done the thriller in Manila, I'm like, oh. Yeah, so yeah, you have kind to of give kind of <laughs> massive, massive credit, massive. But he'll say stuff like, but it, he won't let that get in the way of doing a deal. He won't say, fucking, I can't believe we've paid Kroll of this and Hearn's fucking done me on this and I'm not doing a deal with him again. He'll just say, right, he'll phone me out and go, right, Eddie, forget that. Now we're on to this subject. What do you want to do? Whereas the, the, the problem with what's been going on is they don't even want to talk about, you know, oh, we don't like him, what he said, so we ain't dealing with him. Well, then I just don't feel like that's really working on behalf of the fighter. But again, there's been so much said, I want to go down that road. I want to try and be positive. One thing that doesn't look is a communication between us and them. So there's people trying to help and trying to work on it, and we'll see what happens. But most important, get the wins yeah. on May 18. And I mean, there's a great run there. You've got May 18, um, Wilder, Brazil. You've got May 25th, Usyk, Takam. And then you've got June 1, Joshua Miller. It's a great three straight weeks of heavyweight fights. And then Fury fights later on in June. So, you know, it's great times for heavyweight boxing. You may not be getting the fights that you wanted ultimately this summer, but you do have 10 guys who could all beat each other or be in great fights, and you've never really had that before in the division. I think ultimately, too, the deal is going to come down the split, and the split's been talked about so much. Is that something that is the hardest part of the negotiation, is that? Probably. I mean, look, I think Wilder's made it quite clear he wants 50-50. Yeah. You guys feel he's not entitled to 50-50. No, Why don't you guys do this? Like, and I know it was proposed for Mayweather Pacquiao. Do it a split where the winner gets the extra 10%. Can do, but it doesn't. I mean, that's very... Sounds like a great idea, yeah. but it's never really been done before in boxing. It no, but it, whether that can be done or not, I just... You know, but ultimately, you'll get to a stage where it will come down to the fighters. You know, because if Wilder wants 50-50... You have to say to Joshua, will you give him 50-50? And he'll say, no, I don't believe he deserves 50-50. And if Joshua says, I'll give him 60-40, okay. Then you've got to go to Wilder and say, will you accept 60-40? If he says no, it's done. There's no deal. So, again, uh, one thing I will give Wilder credit for is his profile, you know, going back from when this fight was first offered, I don't know, last summer or something like that, or even like it was so been talked about, too, yeah. but actually proper written offers for this fight. His value now is considerably higher yeah. than it was back then. And he's done a good job. Partly, the, I think the Joshua sort of... Um, they've been pushing him, putting him on broadcast TV. And, and then the Fury fight too, I think both guys. I don't knock Wilder for that. He's got a lot more value than he did this time last year. You know? Do you think they're waiting then for the value to go even more so they could go to 50-50? Maybe they get that in the end. I don't know. Maybe he goes out and has a fight of the year against the Brazil like gets off the deck and comes back and becomes an American. Let me ask you this. Do you personally think he should get 50-50? No. Forget, no, you don't. Okay. Why not? Why not just 50-50 so the fight can happen? Either way, both guys make money. Yeah, but that's an easy thing to say as a fan, yeah. right? And I understand what you're saying. It doesn't really come down to me. Like, the same thing you say, well, Wilder, why don't you just take 60-40? Like, for, if you want to say, why don't you just take 50, why don't you just take 60-40? You know, you got free belt. Someone would say, well, he needs Wilder to make that uh, that mega event. He can't get, like, the amount of money, like, with Miller or anybody else. He He's making much more money than Deontay. This, this is, like, the marquee fight, you know? What we're saying, Marco, is you're talking about a guy who has consistently earned, like, more money than Wilder has, has ever been close to, okay? Consistently. Like, up until two fights ago, Wilder was making, like, $3 million a fight. So when you go to a guy, it's like you, right? Yeah. So you're making eighty thousand dollars a year. I'm not. I don't know that, but, but, <laughs> but and then I come. Come on, to, give me some more credit. Just uh, say say at least a hundred. Unbelievable. Yeah. This is the biggest fight ever, right? You're gonna be in this. Oh, it's a real risky fight. Everything's on the line. But what this? You know, Bubba. This job for you could be massive. This job is gonna make you the biggest star in world boxing. But you're gambling everything. Everything you've ever, you know, worked towards, blah, blah, blah. And you go to me, well, how much am I going to get for that? And I go, 100,000 a year. And you go, well, hold on. You're just like, this is, I'm gambling everything. This is the biggest fight in well, the world. I'm going to ask, well, how much are you making from it? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is let's look at what they're earning. Yeah. That's the key here, in my opinion. 
right? So what, when, you're giving, when you're giving Joshua... Fit, when I think of it as a business, I'm going to be like, okay, it doesn't matter what, how much I'm earning. It's, it's going to matter how much we're going to make from... What's, what's the potential income from this event here? It's not much more than he's making already at 50-50. Yeah. Do you understand? So if, you're, if there's this massive fight, if there's all this risk, if there's the undisputed, surely I should be making a lot more than I'm making at the moment. Wilder is at 40%. Yeah. At 50%, Joshua isn't really. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, is where he's at at the moment, he's earning. He's thinking all this risk and I'm not making much more. Yeah, I don't think he's thinking all this risk because he just wants to fight. Yeah. But there's not a lot of difference in the money to what he's making at the moment to what he could make in that fight. Yeah. To, like to fight Miller, mm -hmm. okay, he'll make more to fight Wilder, but not the difference in levels that Wilder is making. Yeah. Does that make sense? Wilder will make over double well, more, treble, maybe quadruple what he's ever earned before. So, why so this is a lot of the same stuff I remember hearing from the uh, the Mayweather-Pacquiao uh, yeah. negotiations, and I think they finally settled on 60-40 with Manny getting, I think, over 100 million, uh, Floyd getting over 200 million, and ultimately, it, like it kind of wore down, I think, on Manny, and Manny was like, "I'll, I'll just take the 40. Like, I just yeah. want the fight." But that, but that may end up happening with either side. Yeah. Maybe Wilder turns around and says, Do "You know what? Give me the 40 percent. I'm going to yeah. knock him out." And maybe Joshua turns around and goes, you know what, fuck it, just do the 50-50, let me knock him out. Yeah. That's what it will probably take, you know. But all my argument then is what I'm getting at is Wilder will make quadruple times more than he's ever made for this fight. Joshua won't, right? Yeah. So that's really where the difference should be. But again, we go over it again, over it again. It's quite boring. <laughs> and like ultimately, we've just got to try to keep well, going. At some point, you just got to get frustrated and be like, you know what, let's just... Or a broadcaster will come along and go, do you know what? Bosh. Yeah. And everyone goes, fucking right. We can't not do it. Yeah. That's what that's what it'll get to a stage with. That's how it got with Pacquiao. I mean, Pacquiao and Mayweather, although they fought each other outside of their primes, mm -hmm. they got every cent what they could have got at the right to like. It couldn't have got any bigger, mm -hmm. that fight. You know, if it was five years before, wouldn't have been anywhere near as big. Well, look at the kind of the fight that we got yeah, though. Yeah, it sucked. What I will say with Joshua Wilder is, and this is where I think Shelley and Al, they, they are right. It is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's twice the size now than it was this time a year ago. Maybe next year it will be twice the size again. But maybe someone gets beat and maybe we can never do it. So it's like landing a fish. You know, you just got to get it at the right time. And I feel that right time is now. You know, it I, is now. I feel it after, Heavyweight division is super unpredictable. After the Miller-Brazil fights for those two, they've got to jump on it. And they've got to make the fight with each other. Usyk and Joshua, is that more likely, you that's, think? Well, that's an interstable fight yeah. that where one guy could be the WBO mandatory, uh, well, will be the WBO mandatory in Usyk at some point. That's the next mandatory for Joshua. So if he's not fighting Wilder this year, he'll probably have to fight Usyk. That's a tough fight. Like, he could lose to Usyk. And then the undisputed fight goes up in the air. And so, you know, but Joshua... He likes the Usyk fight. I think he has a very tough fight against Carlos Takam for his heavyweight debut. Uh, we're going to learn a lot on May 25th in that fight. But Usyk is a tremendous fighter. And I think Joshua against Usyk is big on so many levels. Um, two Olympic gold medalists, uh, one undisputed cruiserweight world champion, moving up to fight a unified heavyweight world champion. I mean, it's back to the days of Holyfield and Bo. You know, those big fights where there was so much narrative, so much on the line. And... Uh, you know, right now, Usyk is the favourite to fight. And also Dillian White. You know, Dillian White I see as really part of that big four at the moment. And I'd even put Usyk in that mix as five. So Fury, Joshua, Wilder, White, Usyk. They're the big five for me right now. And um, you know, a fight with Dillian White and Joshua is still very likely. I mean, it's not something that's discussed a lot right now. But it was close before. And there's again, they've had a great first fight. They're two Brits. Joshua wants that fight as well. So... Now, the one thing you know with Josh is he's up for fighting everybody. We've seen a lot of the English fighters come over here and make it a point to be here. We're seeing Fury wants to have now the rest of his career here uh, and a lot of the English guys coming here, partly because of DAZN is bringing him over here. But Joshua, this is still his first time and you're, you're starting to see the potential of having the English fighters fight here. It's just a bigger market. It, it's changed a lot in the last year yeah. through DAZN. I mean, DAZN came in with all their money. ESPN stepped up their game. PBC had to step up their game again. And there has become a lot of great financial opportunity for fighters in America that didn't exist a year ago. Britain was the hub. 
right? Now it's changed and a lot of the British fighters are saying, get me some of that, there's own money. So they're coming over, they're fighting. And it's not just the case of giving British fighters paydays. British fighters are very valuable fighters. I mean, Joshua, Dillian White, Callum Smith, Tyson Fury. They're some of the biggest fighters in the world. So, um, you know, there are big opportunities in America right now. It may change. Are we, we going to see him now mainly fight in the no, U.S., you think? think? So. No, no, I think I think this won't be the last time he fights in the U.S., yeah. but I'm excited by the opportunity, you know, to get him to fight at Madison Square Garden. It's going to be an amazing event. Um, and it's going to be... Uh, it's a lot of new challenges for him fighting in New, in New York, in my opinion. So he's excited, and I think everyone's going to see an amazing fight on June 1st. With Usyk being at heavyweight and, say, you know, the Wilder fight takes a little bit longer and the negotiations don't work out. Do you want to throw him in right away with Joshua or do you kind of want to the, settle in? The fight, yeah. Have you had that conversation with yes. him? And it, a lot depends on May 25th. Yeah. Like, I think if he goes in and he knocks out Takam in three or four rounds, mm -hmm. he may turn around and go, I want Joshua now. If he struggles a little bit, if he thinks that he needs to put on a little bit more weight or get a little bit more strength, he may say, give me one more. So I think May 25 will give us all the answers we need for Alexander Usyk. You talked to Klitschko? Yeah, I talk to Klitschko a lot. You know, he's, um, I have massive amount of respect for Vladimir Klitschko. I think he's a legend. You know, I think he's incredibly bright. Um, I think he's a competitor. So he looks at the division now and thinks, I wish it, like, it was like that when I was fighting. But, you know, I'm not sort of uh, qualified to talk on behalf of Vladimir Klitschko. Um, I respect him too much for that. He's going to make his own decisions. I'd love to see him come back uh, to the heavyweight division. I don't know if he will. I think probably has that curiosity every day in his life. And um, we'll see what happens. You now having, what, uh, a year, a year and a half here in the US, right? Uh, no, our first show was in uh, October. October. So yeah, November, December, January, February, March. Five, five months, five six, six months. months. It feels like it's, it's been a little yeah, bit yeah. longer. Well, our How, first show was six months ago. Yeah. So. How's um, the trial and error been here? Like, what, what are the things that you've learned from promoting here in how you see the sport here as compared to over there back home? Um, loads. I mean, and learning every day. You know, I mean, look, I'm sort of a lot of bluster, big mouth. I'm not an idiot. Like, I know we're not going to walk in and sell out in LA and sell out in Philly and do this. So a lot of it is about understanding the market, more importantly, the mentality of the customer. Yeah. You know, and one thing that's cl clinically different is the passion towards the sport between British fans and American fans. You still have that passion, but in Britain, it's like, it's, it's much more of a... Um, well, I think it's your guys' football culture that kind of spills over. Yeah, it is, but I think when you look at, when you look at um, the sports in England, yeah. it is football, boxing, maybe a few others. But in America, you have American football, you have hockey, you have baseball, you have basketball. Yeah, and then you have college football, college basketball, you know. Men and boxing. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then you have UFC, like, so I just think that it's not as big a sport in the US as it is in the UK. Um, the biggest, the bigger challenge for us is understanding the different areas, cities, markets. Like, if I'm doing a show in London, if I'm doing a show in Manchester, same, really, you know. One's a Londoner, one's from Manchester, but they're the same kind of people. Yeah. I know the mentality of those people when I'm doing a show in Philly, and then I'm doing a show in LA on April 26, it's understanding, okay, you're from LA, right? What, what do you want? What do you like? You know? Well, I could tell you what sells where. In LA, it's gonna be Mexicans. Course, yeah, in Philly, it's gonna be Philly fighters. Not, New York, yeah. Puerto Rican fighters. But it's not, I don't think you can ever just say, I'll put a load of Mexicans on. Like, it's, marketing and promotion is, is very, complicated and so well, yeah you the radio stations the papers all that it's more about you know the on social media like there's so many different elements that go into successful marketing promotion and it's understanding what drives what where do you know what I mean and that's our biggest learning curve is like we've done events in Chicago Boston um, Kansas right Turning Stone, uh, New York, now LA. That's a massive opportunity for us, and everywhere is different. So, probably the biggest learning curve is just understanding that everywhere is different. In Britain, Britain's Britain, yeah. Scotland, England, like London, like yeah. There's different sort of economic situations, but same. LA, 
Philly, Turning Stone, yeah, middle of nowhere, Kansas. They're all so different. And what works for one definitely doesn't work for another. But in England, what works for one it works for everybody. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's just really about learning. And I'm prepared to learn. You know, I know that it's going to take time. Um, but I'm really pleased with how things have gone. I'm pleased now with the momentum we've got with cards. We had a great show in Philly. I think the, um, the forum card is a great show on April 26. Obviously, we're involved heavily with Canelo against Jacobs. Then we've got Joshua debuting at MSG. So we've got some real nice momentum now. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm confident. And I'm a young guy. So, you know, I'm, I feel as though we've got time as well. Eddie. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow because there's a lot of other stuff, but I wanted to, to get you uh, back to your day. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Eddie Hearn, uh, Marcos Viegas here in Los Angeles. Thank you guys for watching us over here at Fight Up TV.